Welcome to episode 22 of the Frame of Life podcast. Today, I am so excited to welcome a guest that I have admired for years now. She is basically an online Instagram mentor to me through all of my questions with photo organizing and backing up my photos. It is none other than Casey Von Stein or Miss Freddie on Instagram. She's incredible. She has so many resources available online for helping people DIY their photo organizing and backing up their photos. She also is like very knowledgeable about Mac computers and how to use your technology to help run efficiently when you have little time to manage your photo collection and you can use a lot of her tricks to make it easier. I am so excited to get her on the show today. And without further ado, I'm going to have us dive into the interview and let her introduce herself. And I go as Miss Freddie. That's the name of my business. The nickname comes from an unfortunate resemblance to Fred Flintstone when I was born. So my parents still to this day call me Freddie, not Casey, but you can call me either one. I started my business, gosh, back in 2010 as a family photographer. And over the years, it became clear that people need help using their photos and organizing their photos more than they needed my help taking more photos. So I shifted gears and my business back in 2017 started focusing on photo organizing. So I do one-on-one -on -one work with clients all over the world to organize and back up their photos. And then I also teach courses for people who want to learn how to do it themselves. And I live in Colorado. Did I say that? I've got a 11 year old and a nine year old. It's <laughs> awesome. So today I wanted to bust some myths about backup because I thought that with what you share on Instagram, you're always sharing these great ideas for ways you can tackle your photo overwhelm and back up your photos. You have a backup boot camp that you offer online. It's awesome. I've used it to go through all of my photos and get them all in one place and back up everything. So I think you're the guru here on backup and let's like bust some myths one at a time. That's what's keeping everyone awake at night, right? Are my phones so. backed up? Not to scare everyone like a doomsdayer, but yes. <laughs> so yes. number one, I have a lot of clients who come to me looking for help syncing their photos. And they think that they, because they have iCloud, that everything is backed up and they can see it on all their devices. So that's their backup. They're good to go. But they run out of iCloud space. So that's why they're having problems. So yeah. is that true? If you're just out of iCloud space, does that mean you're out of backup? Or is there something else we should know about iCloud? Yes. iCloud is tricky to understand and almost everyone's using it and they're using it because they're too afraid not to, right? Like they mm -hmm. turned it on one time in a pinch and then they are too afraid to turn it off or they're getting messages constantly that it's full and they don't want to go up and pay more, but they're too afraid not to. So they do. So it kind of has all trapped. Mm -hmm. And iCloud is a great backup for your device. So if I drop my iPhone in the lake, it's okay. I can get a new iPhone. I can sign in with my Apple ID and all the contents come to the new device. But there's not, it's not a backup in the traditional sense that it's this extra copy somewhere that you can go back to get if you make a mistake in your original copy. So the mistake people most often make is they are like, oh, my phone is full. I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff, but it's mm -hmm. okay because it's in iCloud somewhere. And that is not how it works. What on your phone is iCloud. So when you're deleting things off your phone, you're deleting them everywhere. So that's the myth I, I want to bust is people thinking iCloud is this separate backup space somewhere that you can access. It is a backup of your device to save you if the device fails, but it's not a secondary backup of your photos in case something happens. And so I have seen countless times where people lose access to their iCloud account, like they forget their pin code or Maybe something happens like iCloud makes an update and something gets lost. And that is when all of a sudden you realize, oh, that was just one copy of my photos. I don't have another backup to go and get from. So, yes, mm -hmm. it is a great tool to expand the space on your phone. And it's a great tool to, like, give you the peace of mind that your phone, you lose your phone, you're, you got the items. But it's not enough unfortunately. I've had that happen before where you'll get a new phone and you register it with a different email address. So it mm. gets its own new iCloud separate service. So you have two mess. and then they're not connecting and then you don't know what's what. <laughs> yes, that makes a huge mess. Ultimately, everybody should have their own Apple ID. So your kids mm -hmm. get their own Apple ID, your spouse gets their own Apple ID, and you have one Apple ID. And that makes life easier going forward. So every time you get a new device, you log in with your Apple ID and your mm -hmm. contents populate. 
But mm-hmm. yeah, the key is making everyone have their own so that your kids aren't deleting your photos on their iPad because That's they stupid. have access to your stuff. The amount of screenshots I have attached to my kid's iPad right now. I'm like, I didn't take any of these, but it's just a full flow because it's logged in as my. When they have their own Apple ID, you get to control screen time parameters. There's like this whole screen time area where you can set the hours they can access the iPad, the number of hours, the the, the time of day, the apps they can access. You get so much more control as a parent. So when the, you make their own Apple ID, you're going to set them up as a child. And then there's different lockdowns. That, oh, that's that nice. is neat. And then does yeah. that go all under the umbrella as a family? Like, can you have mm-hmm. a family iCloud? account yes. they're paying for monthly for like full storage or how does that work yes so that's another thing that is often misunderstood apple's huge on privacy so everything is private per apple id but you can get a family plan in icloud where you're sharing the payment the space mm-hmm. so even your kids will be on your icloud plan you can share the two terabytes of space but their photos don't show up on your phone because it is your Apple ID on your phone and their Apple ID on their iPad. So sharing a plan doesn't mean sharing your items. There's so many resources available through Apple as a company. If you go to a Mac store and you sit down and take some of their resources and tutorials, it's just none of us have the time to really decipher and understand it. And it gets overwhelming no. for sure. And when you buy the kid or the iPad for your family, like mm. you want to play with it right away, yeah, right? Yeah, you don't, yeah. you're not like, oh, I need, I have a week. I need to like sit down and learn about <laughs> it and get the screen time limits and play. Like it, it, you're, you know, in a crunch. And so I feel like sometimes we make mistakes or we log in with our own Apple mm-hmm. ID on the iPad and then we don't realize, oh, actually this is, they're having access to all my photos. Everything. So when you do get that, if you get a new iPad and you set it up as the kid's ID and go to manage screen time, do you, how do you get a parental control over that? This is a selfish question. Yeah. When I open my settings app on my iPhone, so my Apple ID, and I'm in my iCloud settings, I see family and I can see each of my kids. And there I can go in and say, well, they're nine years old. So it locks down what they're able to access in the app store, like what they can access on YouTube, that kind of stuff. It makes them be a child in the iPad. And then it also makes it so that it sends you a request anytime they want to download an app or buy something. So you have to oh, approve awesome. it. They can't be spending your money on your credit card. But then I also can set the screen time parameter. So I give my kids an mm-hmm. hour of iPad time, yep. can use it on whatever apps they want. But it's only on the weekend. So on Friday, okay. Saturday, and Sunday, they can log into their iPad. And then the cool thing is, this might be going down too big of a rabbit hole, but if it's the same Apple ID on our Mac, our family Mac, each of my mm-hmm. kids have a login with their Apple ID. And so if they're watching YouTube on our family computer, that counts against their hour of screen Ooh. time. So it's like universal across all the devices. I don't have to manage yeah. the computer and the iPad. It's okay. You get an hour. Okay. You use it how you want. I love it. If you're a whole Apple family, then it syncs across devices. Yeah. Okay. So next myth is say they have an external hard drive and they're like, I got the one you said. I like did everything and put all the stuff on there. I got it 12 years ago and it's all there. I just load it. We use it all the time. Is that good enough? So that's great. That's external hard drive is great. I, I am a firm believer that you should have a copy that you own. That external hard drive is yours. Whether or not you have internet access, whether or not you have a login for a cloud service and the cloud is full, whatever. That hard drive is yours that you own. But the backup best practice is three copy. So that hard drive counts as one. And I never trust one copy alone, no matter where Mm -hmm. it is, whether it's on a hard drive, whether it's in iCloud. Mm -hmm. I just can't trust one copy alone because... The reality is if that hard drive has been plugged in for a long time, it'll run for about four or five years. Now, yours has probably been sitting on a shelf and that 12 years maybe isn't like cumulative work time, but they do die or they do stop working or they do get damaged. And so I never trust one copy, but I do love external hard drives. I don't want them to get the bad rap here. No, they shouldn't. But then they also like what's crazy is how like I just had one I had from I think it was six years ago, but it was a work one. I used it all the time, but it was on Thunderbolt. And then that's completely gone. And it was only lived for a very short time. You needed a million dongles for it. And then the drive itself fully died. So I'm like taking it out and trying to see. So it's really scary when you don't have these other systems to back it up. I was Mm -hmm. very happy to know I've been doing photo organizing for a very long time. So I have it in multiple places and no one drive is my end all be all. 
But for clients, it just made me see that this could be really devastating to someone if they don't have other ways of accessing their photos. Yeah. And diversifying, like you mm-hmm. said, is the key. So I have worked with people who are like, I have three copies. It's these three hard drives right here sitting on my desk. Yeah. The risk there, yes, if one drives, one of those drives fails, you have one of the other ones. But what if your kid comes in and knocks over a Dr. Pepper on your desk and it gets all three of those drives wet? Like mm-hmm. that could happen. But what if there's yep. a theft and someone breaks into your house and they grab everything off your desk? They could take all three drives at one. So diversifying mm-hmm. yourself to have something offsite. Mm-hmm. So if you, for me, that's cloud based. That checks the box for offsite. My external hard drive is on site. My cloud is offsite. But if you're someone who doesn't want to use cloud storage, which that I come across that sometimes, then take one of those hard drives and go put it at the office or at school or at a family member's house just to yeah, diversify. I know. It's crazy because I watched you, I think it was last summer, just with the fires rolling through oh out west. Gosh. And it's, it happened. All these natural disasters are now happening everywhere. It's where before it used to be like we're all just afraid of some rogue person coming in your home and breaking it and taking it, which seemed like a low risk, never happens. But yeah, now the floods it's and the earthquakes flood fire. and fires, yeah. it's terrifying. And in those moments, I'm sure that most people are thinking about their photos as they're trying to, like, second to get the family out of the house. Like, it's the the mm-hmm. one next thing that people really do want to protect is get me some tangible thing that I can take back. And yes. it's what helps when you have a cloud you don't have to have that worry but somewhere yeah. offsite or and it's recently updated and you don't have to risk everything to get it yes and do that work now while <laughs> you're a relatively calm and peaceful state mm-hmm. we the i think what you're referring to is when those fires rolled through in colorado in the suburbs and we were in the pre-evacuation zone because if the winds were shifting, it was going to hit our neighborhood. Oh, God. And yeah, in that moment, you're a little paralyzed by yep. what do I grab if you don't have yeah. a plan. And so I kept telling myself, but it's OK. My photos are OK. So I need to grab a mm-hmm. dog. The dog, my kid, yep. the dog food, the medicine, the stuffed animals that are very important to my kids. Mm-hmm. You, you just go to a different. Once your photos are taken care of, you have a, a little bit more of the sense of peace so that in the moment when you're panicking, and you can't think, yeah. you can think about something else other than your photos. I mean, so just I feel bad how many of us have to go through that right now, mm-hmm. which it stinks. But if we can take that off the burden. <laughs> yeah. And then here's the next myth. So a lot of people are like, OK, now I'm going to tackle it. But I have a few minutes. I'm just going to go through and get rid of all the junk. I'm going to save some space and get rid of all the screenshots. And you just go down this rabbit hole. And 30 minutes later, you're like maybe a couple months. <laughs> that is how literally everyone decides they want to tackle this project and that's what they do they start scrolling back and deleting screenshots and blurry photos and all of that it doesn't help you achieve state of relief that you're looking for with your photos Mm -hmm. like that feeling of finishing this project so yeah the myth is ignore the junk and people fight me on that every project they're like oh i don't want you to organize my photos until i get them ready for you (laughs) until i get everything cleaned up But the reality is you're never going to finish that task. Your 30 minutes is going to run out and you will have not gotten back to the beginning of your camera roll. And they're making programs and AI and stuff that's going to hopefully help us do that for us. So why waste those precious 30 minutes doing deleting that isn't really going to push the bottom line? So I think the two things that need to be a priority are getting your photos into one place. So instead, Mm -hmm. use that 30 minutes, making a list of where you currently have photos. The reality is people's photos are everywhere, scattered across several places. And so when we get the request, I just got a request for my fifth grader to submit a baby photo for the yearbook because he's graduating to middle school. Well, for most people, that might be on an old hard drive because maybe they were a baby before your current phone or before you started using iCloud or maybe back then you used Google. And so even a simple ask, can I have a baby photo of a fifth grader? is hard because our photos aren't in one place. So if we can use that 30 minutes, identifying where photos are saved, making a list, and then the next 30 minutes, we can chip away one by one, bringing all those photos into one place. So when you get asked for the fifth grade, fifth grade baby picture, all I did was type Colin, his name, into the search. And 2012, the year he was born. Mm -hmm. And then there we go. There are all his baby photos. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier if you do that initial foundational work of bringing it all into one place. 
And then did I, I said two things, right? The yeah. first thing was giving it all in one place. The second thing is getting those backups like we already talked about. So get it all in one place, then mm -hmm. make sure there's three copies. And mm -hmm. then you're free to play, make the projects you've been meaning to make, or do the cleanup work if that feels like a more of a priority at a time for you. But I have a feeling once you get to there, you can have more fun making books and doing things with your photos, then you're going to even worry about the junk. I know. And I so I have this photo source tracker that I've been using to really check off like all the lists of where things live. And I'm, I'll tag that in the show notes today just so that yeah. you can start listing out like all the different ideas of where sources might be. And there's something very satisfying to like, know that you've gone to Shutterfly, gotten them all off. You've gotten them off of Google. And it takes a long time to do that. So one of the things I think your second point might have also been, or maybe it's a third point for us, is to really focus on those MVP ones, those ones that are the most valuable to you. And instead of focusing mm -hmm. on deleting the junk in the screenshot, go identify those key photos that you want and get mm -hmm. them to one place and in that hub and from whatever source they come from. But make sure yeah. that you get those first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that has a deeper impact, right? You could spend 30 minutes deleting screenshots or you could spend 30 minutes hearting the best photos. And if you spend that 30 minutes making hearts on the favorites, that makes it easier for you to make a book. That makes it easier for you to make a gift at the end of the year. That makes it easy for you to find the baby photo. I just got for Mother's Day, I just got a digital frame. It was super easy. I took everything that was hearted and just put it on the frame. Oh, and so awesome. that work can serve you in more ways than the mm -hmm. deleting work can. In the end, it's much more fulfilling. Which which frame did you get, side note? <laughs> I got the aura. The, okay, have really you had that one perfect. before? I actually did not have a digital frame. I didn't okay. think I wanted one or needed one because we have a Google Home and it shows our photos on it. Mm -hmm. But I am obsessed with it. It's been a good day. Yeah. And I just, um, I love my kids' reactions to seeing the photos on there. We yeah. have printed books. And so I always felt, okay, my kids are seeing their pictures, but this digital frame is hitting in a whole new way and so much mm -hmm. variety. And so I'm loving it and yeah. the whole family's loving it. Yeah. Does this one do video too, or is it just photos? It does video, but I have not added any videos to it okay. yet. Oh, that's smart. I like we, I got Nick's play for my family mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and I haven't decided which one I want. Cause I like, I do think that there's some great value to seeing it. And then our Google home, our kids were figuring out how to, how to get on YouTube. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's just another Correcting. screen to man in. And I'm like, no, I don't want you calling up this song or playing YouTube. Right yeah. So I do think that there's a real benefit to having a bunch of these images. Does the Aura frame connect? Do you have to add it to an app, the pictures to an app? Or is it, how does it connect? Yeah, actually, one thing that was really cool is so my husband bought it for mm -hmm. me for Mother's Day. And then he had the option to preload it with some photos from his own phone. At, like, so when I plugged it in, it was like pre-filled with 20 photos that he picked. Mm -hmm. And then I logged into the app. I saw those and then I had the option to add more. Because I've done a lot of work harding and making albums of my favorites, it was so easy to set up because I picked my, I have what I call best of albums. So I have a best mm -hmm. of each kid, the dog, and like the family. And so I just added five best of albums in the app to this aura. Oh, and awesome. the cool thing is it's auto update. So when you add an album, automatically adds more to the frame as you add more to the album. So as I add new pictures to my best of the dog, they'll oh show gosh. up on the frame without me having to manually add them to my frame. I'm so it's actually going to get this. Why is I'm like, really cool. This is cooler than I thought. No, it's awesome. Because the one, the next one, I know I have to physically add the photos and then you only have a certain amount that you could do. And it, I keep, I thought it would be better at it, but it's just yet another thing. So yeah. I love hearing that it, you can sync it's an auto album to it. And there's not a limit. That is the big difference. I do like Nick's plays, and I recommended them for years, but it's nice that there's They're not a limit. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm checking this one out. And I'm gonna... that brings me another question, which is great, because all my notes say is Apple Photos sucks. <laughs> so I will say it's not for everyone. So <laughs> I don't think. It's a great solution for PC users because it's just not great functionality. The Apple wants you to buy a Mac. And so they're going to make the experience on Windows be great. And they don't. And so I think there are better solutions for PC users. Not everyone needs to use Apple Photos. But if you're already in the Mac ecosystem, you're paying for iCloud, you own a Mac, and you own an iPhone. If you check those boxes, it is a great solution because you put all your photos into it on the Mac. 
Mm-hmm. You can organize everything in there. Get your albums just how you want it. When I was setting up my aura, I saw I have 287 albums. Who you name them? So I just, I like organizing things the way I want them. But then mm-hmm. the beauty is that it's synced across all your devices automatically. So I was able to set up the aura frame from my phone with mm-hmm. all the access to all those albums, even though I made the albums on my computer a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And so if I take a picture on my phone, it just shows up on the computer. And the really cool thing, I know people resist this, oh, I need to pay for more iCloud space because I'm holding my whole life in Apple Photos. <laughs> I have 30,000 in my camera roll. Mm-hmm. I switched my mindset recently to be thinking, I am paying iCloud for the, the tech and the innovation. Mm-hmm. I am paying iCloud for the innovation. That means I can now search for faces in videos. I can search for the word dog and find him in videos and in photos. I can search text. I can copy and paste off of text. I use it all the time in my business. There's just these new features that Apple keeps adding. Like every fall when they make their updates, there's some new exciting photo feature. And so that is what I'm paying $10 a month for. Mm -hmm. And then they feel better about it. (laughs) Yeah. They just keep getting better and better. And there are other cloud services out there that are great. I recommend Amazon to lots of people because it's a more budget-friendly alternative. It's not $10 a month like iCloud is, but you don't get as many features. And so now I'm yeah. viewing it as I'm paying $10 a month at iCloud, but I'm getting all these extra features over here in photos that are making my life better. Oh, that I know. I'm Because I went all in on Amazon, and then they got rid of Amazon Drive. And the reason I liked Amazon Drive was, like, I liked the folder structure. And I I know that you can still go in and see it. It's just not. It's so much clunkier now. And I'm like, oh, just need it to come back. But can you get that sort of functionality now in app if you use your Apple Photos that way? Or is it? could make your Apple Photos work that way. But it was, it is it is a departure from folder-based management. It is okay. data-based, right? So okay. I'm searching by a date or I'm searching by a person or I'm searching by a place and it's searching my whole collection. Whereas when I was folder-based in the past, I would remember a year and go to that folder and find what I needed. Yeah. And I prefer the database now, but it just okay. took some time. They do have folders in apple but it's not a traditional folder right it's not holding contents like you think of a folder on your computer on your mac or pc their folders are used to organize albums so when i said i had 287 albums well they are Mm -hmm. in like six folders that say oh travel family miss freddie for my work stuff and so i don't see 287 albums like i had to at, at amazon they're oh, just awesome. organized into folders so, so it's like a category a more like said category tab like filtering it almost yeah so if you delete hold that, pictures folders hold albums that's how it works at Apple. that makes sense okay yeah so if you delete a folder does it delete all the albums within that folder it deletes Probably. the albums inside the folder yes but it doesn't delete the pictures Okay, picture stay in your library. That's what I meant. Okay. So if you delete the picture, though, it will come out of the album and all the the folder. Okay. Yes. So the way Apple Photos work, or all all cloud services with albums work this way, you have one copy of a photo, and you can add it to as many albums as you want. As you add it to albums, it's not making additional copies of that one photo. The albums are referencing back to the original copy. So if you would delete that original copy from your library, it's deleted out of all six albums. It's gone. So, yeah. Okay. Albums are such a great tool because they're not increasing the space in your library. They're not duplicating your photos. They're just giving you quick reference points yeah. to get back oh, to the ones awesome. that you want. Yeah. And then can you talk a little bit about optimi- optimizing your photos? Because I know mm-hmm. that I've run into it where I'm just still afraid to let them do that because yeah. they're going to get sucked into the cloud and then I can't find them when I need them. And I didn't even put iCloud back onto this new phone that I got. Or yes, <laughs> that's one of the most common questions I get asked. Is people are very afraid of the optimizing feature. And again, that's what we're paying iCloud to do. That's what okay. paying iCloud is to give us basically unlimited photos on mm-hmm. our phone. We don't have to constantly get a message. Your phone's out of space. You need to delete a photo before you can take a new photo. That never happens when you're paying for iCloud. So the myth to bust is 
Yes, when you optimize space, the photo doesn't exist on the phone anymore in its full size. You still see it there. Nothing looks different mm -hmm. in Apple Photos, but they're not taking up space on the phone. So you're not okay. limited by the size of your phone. That full size photo still does exist in iCloud. So you're not ruining the quality of your photos by optimizing. You're just making your life easier, giving yourself room to breathe so that you can not be limited by the size of your phone. Now, if you need okay. to use those pictures, like you wanted to airdrop them to someone or you wanted to edit it or you wanted to upload it to Instagram, that triggers iCloud to say, oh, she needs this photo right now. So I'm going to bring the full size back down. It's all happening behind the scenes. So you don't know okay. that any of this is happening. So if you're going to go to Shutterfly app or something and upload some pictures to go make a book, that's going to trigger iCloud to download them back to your phone in full size. So okay. there's not a reason not to optimize, in my opinion. Yeah. I think the benefits, I, I can't think of a, a con, right? Yes, they're not being saved in full size on your phone anymore, but when you go to use them, they come back in full size. So you just, I think the strategy, because thinking for me, I had 512. I had a ton of megabyte storage on this guy, but then it was like almost up, it was almost full because it wasn't optimizing. And I got a yeah. new phone. I was like, do not give me those photos right now. I want to think about it. So yeah. I think for iCloud, I think that's probably just running anything new right now and the old ones but the old ones haven't come over here yet because i haven't if you have them. two different apple ids then that's how it would be working but if you have one the apple one. id icloud's yeah. either on or it's off and so okay. if it's on for your photos you see everything that exists okay in so maybe it's not on if okay it's off then your new items aren't going there either you can look at like mathematically we could look at we're paying however much a month to icloud i said i'm paying ten dollars right. a month that's the plan most of my students and clients have is the two terabyte plan Okay, I'm paying $10 a month, but I bought the smallest storage size phone. This is right. the, the smallest storage size. And so I saved several hundred dollars to buy it. It was still, so big. It was still very expensive. These phones are very expensive. But it was less yeah. than buying the one terabyte phone that they yep. make now that people feel like they need to hold all their photos. Because you don't. They're held in iCloud. I can have the smallest set of storage size and I see 30,000 photos. Oh yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's <laughs> nice to have a huge song, though. You don't have to optimize if you don't want to. No, I take a lot of video, so I really wanted to make sure I had room for to be able to move them around. But still, I want to. I do miss not being able to find these pictures now. I liked seeing them all the way back. Um, yeah. Okay, so then just, I think I've heard you just say in the past that some cool tips about searching that I loved. So I learned <laughs> recently that you can search within your favorites and then just do a comma and add mm -hmm. another descriptor to it. And then you can get more images filtered down. There just are so words. many ways you can search in Apple Photos specifically. Every cloud service has a little bit different search features, but in Apple, mm. you can search by person, place, thing, date, source. So you could search the word Canva and find all the graphics that you made for oh, your right. business. So there's so many ways that you can search by text. You can search the word chicken and find all the screenshots you screenshotted of chicken recipes. So there's so many ways you can search, but then it gets more powerful when you combine them. So you can search for a person's name. So I was making a video for my son's 10th birthday. I searched Colin, comma, videos. So it would just be the okay. times he appeared in videos. I could have also done comma favorites to be the videos that I favorited because I loved them the most. So another example would be coming out of Mother's Day. I wanted some pictures of me with the kids to do a yeah. little collage or reel on Instagram. <laughs> and so I just searched my name, comma, my son's name, comma, my daughter's name. And so then that pulled back all the times we were together in photos. So that, yeah. again, once you shift to this database way of managing your photos over an Apple, you really are reliant on search. I have 30,000 yeah. photos that would be unrealistic for me to search back and just try to find ones of me right. and my two kids together when I could just type our three names into search and find That's them in awesome. seconds. Yeah, no, <laughs> this one's pretty great. I never, I just didn't even know about the comma trick. Uh, I've just added the words, but I'm curious. I'm gonna try this out. And you can and combine I, them in so many ways. So you can do yeah. like a person, a year, or a person, mm -hmm. a date, a person, the word Canva, a person, the word Nikon, because you know that your professional photographer always uses a Nikon, and so you can wow. combine them in that way. You can also use the word favorites, the word selfie. If you remember that, it was like a selfie that you took <laughs> videos. Photos. It's been, there's so many ways that you can filter search and find what you need quick. Okay. That's amazing. Okay. My last yeah. question. Video wise, what is your favorite way? I think you have this app now that you've been using to get them on your TV that your kids oh, yeah. can watch. Can you talk uh -huh. to us about that a little bit? Favorite way to compile videos or view videos, sure. share videos? So I started a tradition back in 2020. 
where I made a custom video for my family after any trip. So we, right before the pandemic, it was January, we went on a ski trip to Tahoe and I took a bunch of video footage and I set it to music. So everything looks so rosy and, and pretty and the videos are really fun. I made them for that trip. And then every trip since, my kids during the mm -hmm. trip are saying, are you taking some footage so that you can make a video? And then as mm -hmm. soon as we walk back in the door of our house, they're like, where's the video? <laughs> so they love it so much that I have to keep doing it. And I do mm -hmm. love it too. But yeah. they've been looking for ways to make it easy for them to watch the videos. Mm -hmm. And so there's two things we use that we love that are different that people haven't heard of. One is a video book. I sell them through okay. my website. I don't Ooh. have one sitting here, but they are like a little mm -hmm. tablet. That only plays videos. So it's like a flash drive that you load with the videos. And then my kids can open it and push play and move forward and backward through the videos. And that's it. There's no internet. There's no wow. apps that I need to manage and games. It's just they watch our videos. And it's really easy to watch or it's fun to watch them share. They When we get a babysitter or a neighbor comes over, yeah. they like, come and watch. Yeah. You're, and then you're, open it up and play it. Yeah. For so cool. Oh, that is very easy technology for children of all ages could do it and all the way up through grandparents can do it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need any tech ability. The other thing that we've been using more recently that we love is called Projector. It is a paid service, basically like a, a personal Netflix. So okay. on our TVs in our house, there's the app called Projector. My kids open it like they would Netflix and then they see all our videos and you can okay. arrange cool. them by category so i have like travel videos and just daily videos i'm in the process of loading up some of my childhood videos and then two from like mm -hmm. vhs tapes and stuff so they just my kids know how to navigate netflix very well they can navigate mm -hmm. projector in the same way <laughs> and i upload videos to it on a website on my computer and then they okay all of our tvs have access to play it so it is a paid you service eighty dollars a year i think it's so much more private, though, than Netflix. And, it's good. Or not Netflix, sorry. Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. So much more yeah. private than YouTube. It's a little more user-friendly for my kids. They can just hit play. Go in and get it. Do yeah. you have to load, like, a? do they have to be on a private YouTube channel to, like, link mm -hmm. on the web? Or do you load the actual video file? You have to. It's it. uploading your video like you would to YouTube. You're uploading yep. the projector instead. They're a great company. They're really new. They just started up during the pandemic as well because mm -hmm. they were at home trying to find a solution for their own photos. And so mm -hmm. and getting better. They work on all the TVs that we have in our house. Oh, all that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So you help people manage all of their photos from these DIY class courses online to do you do one to one con consultations with people, too, if they wanted to just talk directly with you? Oh, yeah. And any more consults, okay. if you just want to talk to me for 45 minutes about whatever problem is and get some personalized advice, I do that. Otherwise, I do full one on one services where I organize your photos okay. for you. That's a longer term mm -hmm. project, though. Those take several weeks. Yeah. Well, and you can take over people's computers and mm -hmm. help show just do the process for them. So I know mm -hmm. a lot of my clients ask me to do that. And I'm just not I don't have the time to be able to do that right now. And we're incredible at it. You also scan and convert video files over. So if you have old VHSs or you have scrap mm -hmm. big scrapbooks you want to have digitized, you're an awesome person to send that to. It's oh, like scrapbooks. Always nice to, to yeah, well, it's nice to know there's a real yeah. person too doing yes. it. Like it's really scary to just tack it up in a box and ship it off somewhere. If it's too mm -hmm. scary to put your whole basement in one box at yeah. one time, <laughs> you can just send me 20 tapes and I'll mm -hmm. digitize them and then we'll work on this gradually over time. It doesn't have to be one thing that we tackle all in the same day. It's yeah. amazing. So all this information is like on your website that they can get to you and then over mm -hmm. on Instagram. I am Miss Dot Freddy on <laughs> Instagram and I am just Miss Freddy dot com online and you can find all the information about my services and my courses at the website. It's so amazing. I'm so glad that you came on today and I yeah. will definitely be linking all this in the show notes and we will be in touch. I'm so gr grateful for yeah. you spending the time with us today. That was such an incredible chat with Miss Freddie. I am just like fangirling over here. And also I had so many more questions. I think we're going to have to have her back regularly as our little ask an expert and hang out and chat when technology changes because I learned a lot today and I'm sure you have too. Most important takeaways I had was really that I need to give Apple Photos a try again. I'm going to use it sparingly as like a way to start organizing my photos so that they're easy to access on my phone on the go. 
ever since Amazon Photos got rid of their folder access, I really just haven't been using it as much. And I've lost control over all of the organizational structure that I gave it a few years ago when I went through Miss Freddie's backup boot camp. So I just want to tweak my little method and I'll keep you updated as we go. I wanted to mention a few different resources that I'm going to have linked in the show notes. Miss Freddie is graciously offering $10 off to our listeners for her backup boot camp series. It's a DIY course. It takes a few months to get through if you have a ton of different sources. I want to give you that warning, but it is incredible because you can actually get down and dirty and do all the hard work yourself, getting all of your photo sources in one place and start getting them organized so that you can access them on the go the way I can. It's really worth it. I'll have a link you can get right to it and use the code FOL at checkout for $10 off uh, her backup boot camp. Highly recommend. I'm also going to be linking different links that we talked about in the show, like getting you to the projector app and the Aura frame. Also, we didn't get to it when we chatted, but there's a service if you are looking for a way to, if you're all caught up on getting your photos in one spot and you have your MVPs where you want them, using an app called Ollie to go through and find the best pictures. It helps categorize all your pictures into one. It uses AI to pick and group photos together and helps you eliminate duplicates and blurry photos and pick the best one of a series of photos if you're looking for some help using an app. So we're going to link the Ali app in the show notes as well. You can also check out my photo collection tracker if you are looking to do something a little less than backup boot camp but want to start doing some work on your photo organizing on your own. The photo collection tracker is a Google spreadsheet that I use that um, you can load up on Google and you just start identifying all of your photo sources and tracking your progress. As always, I'm at Frame of Life Project on Instagram. I would be happy to answer any questions you have in my DMs and I can't wait to talk to you next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>